Sometimes it is difficult to know objectively the pace at which Elon Musk's SpaceX makes progress. The advancements we're seeing at the company's Starbase site in South Texas are unprecedented. Swiftly, in a short period, SpaceX is now ready for everything on the new ship and the Super Heavy for the next orbital flight of Starship. Find out everything about this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. It's been three to four weeks since Starship's second test launch, and Elon Musk has fulfilled his promise with the hardware ready for the transition to the third flight. The vehicles for the third flight are expected to be Ship 28 and Booster 10, both of which have undergone some upgrades, promising an excellent performance in the first quarter of 2024. On December 14, 2023, to complete the engine testing process before the next Starship mission, SpaceX kicked off this campaign by moving Ship 28 to suborbital pad B to prepare for a possible static fire that could happen swiftly. Starship 28 has undergone two successful cryogenic resistant tests at Massey's before spending over two months on the stand at the Sanchez location to receive engines and upgrades. To be honest, compared to the Starship second launch, I have much more expected in the third launch, not only because of the lessons learned, but also because Starship 28, being a prototype, has had technical improvements right from its inception. Stacked in March 2023, Ship 28 took just over a month to take shape. The main reason is that it was the first ship to be stacked with a new method. Instead of initially stacking two halves of the ship that are then joined together, they now stack it from the top to down. This allows the crane to remain attached to the nose cone throughout the entire process. Furthermore, welding robots only need to operate on the ground and not at elevated heights. This not only makes the structural framework of Starship more robust, but also saves time and human effort. Alongside that, Booster 10, Ship 28's companion, is also a factor that piques the curiosity of rocket enthusiasts like us. Surely, it's undergone upgrades, but only with time and multiple launches can one determine whether there have been any significant changes on the stage compared to Booster 9 or not. However, we have more positive signs that Booster 10 is about to move. The booster transport stand swiftly entered the mega bay to receive the booster, with a hot staging ring installed. Tests may quickly take place, such as cryogenic resistant tests, testing all 33 engines simultaneously, followed by static fire tests of all 33 engines before being flight ready. One of the promising tests for Booster 10 or Ship 28 might be deployed in the upcoming Starship road closure schedule, possibly on December 18th. However, there is a possibility that SpaceX will conduct additional cryogenic resistant tests with Booster 10 sooner, and perhaps with the entire stack due to recent upgrades they've completed at the orbital tank farm. Before reaching the next milestones, Booster 10 has now been rolled to the Rocket Garden, a space that occasionally serves as a parking lot or storage area for both boosters and ships. There's nothing too serious about this temporary pause as it occurs the pad and chopsticks are not yet fully ready for the booster or other flight hardware. Our anticipated hardware has already become a complete booster, and although it already plays the role of a prototype, the progress at Starbase continues to demonstrate advancements in construction and structural refinement. The Rocket Garden now features Booster 10 standing alongside various generations of Starship prototypes showcasing significant progress from one iteration to the next. Among the various generations of Starship prototypes on display, Ship 20, which has never flown, is followed by Ship 31, a potential candidate for future flights. Ship 26, resembling an engineering pathfinder, Booster 4, which has yet to take flight, and now Booster 10 stands side by side. Several significant changes are notable between Booster 4 and Booster 10. The reinforcements on the common dome have increased, and notably, Booster 10 lacks the heat protection units, HPUs, seen on other boosters. Moreover, advancements in the hot staging ring itself have been swift. A clear view reveals that the old stand, which barely covered Raptors, has been replaced with a more sophisticated stand. The scale of the hardware is further highlighted in an excellent view showcasing the hot staging ring and the common dome installed inside to deflect the exhaust of the Raptors on the ship. After the third flight, SpaceX is expected to continue with sequential booster ship pairings. For example, Ship 25 will fly with Booster 11, Ship 30 with Booster 12, Ship 31 with Booster 13, and so on. 
However, it's still unclear whether this sequential order will be maintained as SpaceX may be planning for ground test vehicles later. Meanwhile, the Starship spacecraft continues its relentless refinement. Ships 29 and 30 are currently in the high bay to complete their work while awaiting engine installation and stand installation at Sanchez. Ship 31 is resting in the rocket garden and is only waiting for a spot in the reopen high bay. Booster 12 has been moved to the working stand on the left at Mega Bay and will be ready for cryogenic resistant testing. Booster 11 has been in enhancement phase for almost a month as it completes engine work and other flight preparation tasks. Booster 13 is still awaiting new parts after the first part was removed for reasons unknown. Everything is being produced in a planned sequence, with ample time for the next variants always ready as the previous iterations take flight. But to be approved for the third flight, SpaceX will need to request a modification to the launch license as Amendment 1 of License Number Volume 23-129 for the second flight notes. For Orbital Flight Test 2, unless this license is amended to remove this restriction, Additionally, a risk investigation will be required before the next launch if there are any anomalies during the second flight. Ships from 28 to 32 share many similarities, although older ships may receive additional upgrades. Regarding the rocket boosters, boosters 10 to 13 show reasonable changes between them as SpaceX continues its upgrades. Of course, it's not just the hardware that's ready, but the launch site is also a bustling hub of activity, with progress and anticipation for upcoming milestones in the Starship program. First, the tank farm expansion is a prominent feature. The area is witnessing continuous work with plumbing, piping, and manifold enhancements in progress. The entrance to the launch area is undergoing significant changes, with the complete removal of the container wall and continued installation of horizontal tanks and corresponding pipelines. The current tanks were observed to be vented, indicating propellant filling and preparation for upcoming tests. This expansion aligns with SpaceX's commitment to ensuring the efficiency and capacity of the propellant storage and distribution systems, essential for powering the ambitious Starship missions. Besides, the orbital launch mount, a critical element in the launch infrastructure, is undergoing inspection, refurbishment, and repair in preparation for the next flight test campaign. In the past week, SpaceX replaced all 20 Super Heavy hold-down clamps on the orbital launch mount. Initially, it was assumed that the first replacement was due to damage from a previous rock tornado. Still, the fact that they needed replacing again suggests potential issues with retracting speed or strength to withstand the power of the 33 Raptor engines. It remains unclear whether the newly swapped clamps are upgraded in any way or if they're identical to the ones removed for inspection. The removal of components from the launch pad continues, with the removal of the booster, quick disconnect hood, and two flex hoses from the mechanism. While these could be for post-launch inspection, there's a possibility that they may need replacement. Though not heavily damaged, SpaceX is meticulous in detailed inspections, making continuous efforts to enhance and maintain a robust and reliable launch platform. Notably, there have been changes at the Gateway to Mars, including a successful retraction test of the Starship quick disconnect arm and full raising of the chopsticks after post-launch work. These critical components play a pivotal role in supporting and handling Starship during various testing and flight stages. Remember, during the second test flight, there was a delay evident in the movement of the chopsticks arm. So this is an aspect that SpaceX needs to address for the next launch. And that's all for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.